Hey YouTube, my name is Jamie with Open Adoption Open Heart, the Facebook page, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about who is involved in our Open Adoption. Soon after being contacted, we decided to connect on Facebook with our son's birth mother. Um, and she left a lot of comments, there was a lot of communication between us on Facebook, so it was very easy for others to look in and see, they knew we were adopting. There was a lot of curiosity surrounding it because it was exciting, we had waited so long to become parents and, they were, and everybody was kind of curious as to how things were going to move forward. And so it was very instant that our son's birth mom, Brianna, started getting Facebook friend requests from our family members, from our friends, and even some, some acquaintances started to request her as a friend. And it was quite overwhelming at the time, just because it's already such a delicate relationship that the thought of having so many hands involved was a little bit unnerving. And so at that point, we had just kind of made a decision that we didn't want to mingle the two yet. And so we talked to our family members and just asked them not to friend. And also those friends and acquaintances that also reached out and added her, we just asked them to go ahead and unrequest um, so that we could have a little more privacy in the process. And everybody was actually really respectful and most understood. And we also, of course, talked to Brianna about these friend requests and she supported us fully in this decision. Our son is almost four now, and so we have not blended the two support groups um, up to this point. Yes, I know that there's gonna be special events where this is gonna happen, and that will be really wonderful, such as graduations and weddings and different special events. But for birthdays and those kind of things, we just choose to do them separate. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is when you are mixing and mingling, say for instance, our birth mom becomes friends with my sister and there's information being passed around, I'm going to eventually get information that I don't necessarily want and vice versa. Information that I do want is only the information the birth parents are telling us. Now when it comes to the birth parent side with their extended family members, it's a little bit different than ours because our child is biologically theirs and we want to be able to keep those connections and those ties open with aunts and uncles and grandparents and cousins and so to do that we do have a little more um, communication and contact than the birth parent would have with our family but there is one thing that we always do whenever anybody on the extended birth family side comes to us and wants to have a visit we always contact our birth parents first to see if they're okay with it. They know who's safe. They know who they want to have contact with, you know, their child. And I feel like because it's in their world, they have every right to kind of decide who comes around and who doesn't. And I trust their judgment. So we like to give them that control and we always, always check, even if they've already given permission once for that person to come. Every time the request happens, we will always go to them directly and let them make that, that choice. Everyone in the Adoption Triad family needs a support group. They need to be surrounded by those who love them. They need to be surrounded by people that they can voice frustrations to and not worry about the information getting back to the other side. You know, there's frustrating things. It's painful. There's things that we go through that we don't see eye to eye on. And sometimes you just need a place to lay your fears. And, and then all of a sudden you don't feel as strongly and things wind down and you feel a little more comfortable and then you don't feel that way at all anymore. And so if there's crossing between support groups, there is that possibility that information can be passed that could be hurtful to either side. So that's one other reason why we choose to keep them separate. We chose open adoption for our children first and foremost. We never knew coming into the adoption how much we would love and embrace our child's birth parents. I think we always knew we would love them, but we never fathomed how much we would love them to this point. It's overwhelming and it's beautiful and it's heavenly and I'm so grateful for it. But when it comes down to it, we all, adoptive parents and birth parents, are doing open adoption for the child. 
And I feel like Russell and I both, if there's too much contact, it takes away their right to define their journey. If there's too little contact, it's the same thing. I feel like we have the perfect balance for our family and our adoption triad. We're just continually working and reading the child and finding that balance that works. And hopefully when our child is in their teen years or preteens, that they can start determining what kind of contact they have with their birth parents. And of course, we will always encourage you know, an open relationship, but eventually we want our children to be able to kind of define their own adoption journey. Many might wonder how it feels for the um, adoptive extended family to not play a huge role in that relationship. And I know that it has been tender at times for some who wish that they could have contact with their birth family members, but at the same time, as an adoptive couple, we have to create boundaries with the needs that our family has, um, even above what other people need. Of course, of course, of course, I'm not speaking of the birth parents. Um, we always consider their needs when we're making decisions. Um, but when it comes to anybody outside that triad, we have to do what's best for our family, just like any, any parent would do. And so even though at times we have family members or friends or birth family members who don't quite understand the boundaries, it's okay. As long as they're respecting those boundaries, we don't need them to completely understand. But we sure, sure do um, appreciate the respect and the concern for all that we do in our family. I definitely want to talk about how these boundaries should never be created by insecurities. It should be planned out. It should be thought out and then it should be put to action only for the benefit of the adoptive triad family. There's tons of different ways, like I said before, to create these boundaries. And you just have to navigate your heart, see what you're okay with and what you're not okay with. Sometimes I see that adoptive parents think they need to give more than they actually do. We share tons of things. We share tons of things with our birth families and we love it. It's not that we have to, but at the same time, it's okay to take pieces for yourself, for us, we needed the support groups to be separate. This is not the only way to do things. I have many, many friends who are adopted parents and also birth parents, and every adoption triad is extremely different from one to the other. And it's just about creating a balance that is perfect for your adoption triad family. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoy the video. Please feel free to leave comments and also don't forget, check us out on Facebook.